everybody, Tom here. Uh, I've got a package. Package I literally just got in the mail about 10 minutes ago. Uh, it just showed up. It is from Canada. Yeah, our brothers to the north. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. This is not... It's somewhere between an unboxing, a review, and Postman Fro. And uh, all these bubble packs. Hi, Elliot. Are you here to see what we're opening? Bet you are. Let's see. Where's the? These are from our friends at Stead Snap. So, if you haven't seen what a Stead Snap is yet, because I know I haven't talked about it on Aperture Chat, Stead Snap is a little startup up in Canada. I've ordered two of them. Uh, one will be Ryan's when we get that far. Stead Snap is a connector that allows you to use both your strap and your tripod simultaneously, which up till now generally required you have to take the connector off the bottom of your strap and then put on your, your plate, Narca Swiss plate or whatever your tripod plate is, and then you know switch back and forth between them so uh, there's two gentlemen up in Canada, Yuri and Dimitri. I'm not going to even try and butcher their last names out of respect. Uh, I can tell you from interacting with Dimitri via email, he's a really nice guy. He's really smart and he knows uh, how to do customer service right. He answered a lot of my questions, including some on shipping, which he had to go and find out from the post office and come back to me. So that was great. So these guys are a pleasure to work with. And they have created a uh, device that allows you to snap your uh, strap, the carabiner part of your strap, into it. And it is a pass-through that will then go into your plate for your tripod. So, I'm going to take this out of the package. I get my stead snap. This is a fairly small little round container. It comes out and you can see in the top there, this is actually the bottom of the stead snap plate with their logo on it. Take that out. A little tricky. First time. All right. So there's our stead snap logo. And then what they have around here are actually the instructions. What little bit of instructions they are, a little descriptor. So do not ingest, do not propel, which means don't, you know, don't throw it at people. Basically, right as it shows, plate, stead snap, into your camera. Boom, done. You can connect your carabiner there. So we'll put this off to the side. And it's pretty straightforward. You're going to put your plate for your tripod into there. Clip in there. Put that into your camera. Boom. You've got it. So we're going out to go shoot in, out in the field today. And what I've got is standard 70 millimeter Arca Swiss plate. Uh, my e photo tripod, which is actually holding up the camera right now, takes standard Arca Swiss plates so I can replace these anywhere I want. It's not like some of the Manfrotto proprietary ones that are out there. So I'll just screw that down. Boom. This is a 70 millimeter plate. It is a little long, but my spare. And since I'm going to be shooting with my 7200 while I'm out there, that's where I would attach both the tripod and the carabiner clip for the See, there it is, it goes right in between. There's my tripod plate, there's my stead snap, there's the camera, and I have to have my black rapid strap right here, which has the standard, just so you can see the standard clip on it. Nothing special to it. Let me take that off. Put this right in. Clips right in. Tighten it down. Just fine. So, I'm ready to go out in the field. Alright, so I'm all set to go out. I've got my stead snap. Black Rapid clipped into my stead snap. I've got an Arca Swiss plate 
This is all on my 7200. We're ready to hit the field. Feels pretty good hanging off my side. Uh, just had to make sure uh, to clip it into the back side of the clip when I put it in because if I put it in the front side, it would want to hang upside down a lot. Uh, that is one of the downsides to not having the full vertical on it. Uh, if this is horizontal and the plane is supposed to vertical. So that is one thing to watch out for when you're using this, I'm already seeing. And let's head out into the field and let's see what it is it does well. So, we're out here in Haynes Memorial Park in Riverside, Rhode Island. Uh, we've got some nice nature to walk around in, we've got some sporting fields, although it's late in October so there aren't too many people out playing, and we've got a dog park over behind Jesse there who's running the camera for me today. Thank you, Jesse. And so we're going to run the, the stead snap through its paces. I've got it on the strap right now. As you can see, it's all set up like I set it up in the studio. I've got my tripod out. Which I can also convert down to a monopod, so we're going to see how it functions in all three cases. So I'm out here walking around, and one thing I've noticed putting this on here is that because of the design of the stead snap having a front and a back clip as opposed to the one vertical, that you want to make sure you're clipped into the back. That is definitely one thing. The first time I hooked this up, it was in the front, and the camera sat like this instead of like this. And it made it really difficult because every time you wanted to pick up the camera, it was pick it up, turn it around. It was not very efficient. But now that I've got that figured out, it's actually very comfortable to walk around with and just take pictures. And I can just go boom. So it really, really, when you're shooting off of the strap, it doesn't feel any different than shooting off of the Black Rapid by itself. Um, like I said, it actually actually helps a little bit in that it forces the camera to stay up. So that's definitely a plus. And really, it just, it doesn't feel any different. So we'll next we'll see how it feels moving to the tripod and how shooting on the tripod goes. All right, so I've gone ahead and set up the tripod. Uh, I've got a tree ahead of me here that I've, I've more or less framed up the shot already, but uh, just to kind of give you an idea of what we're looking at here. I can drop this right onto the head and tighten it down. That's no problem. I can even get in here. I know it's a vertical shot, so I've got this lined up. But one thing I did notice when I was working with this, trying to get this, this shot set up for you guys, is that once it's on here, this is actually very difficult to take off. In fact, Nearly impossible to take off while you're on the tripod because you can't get your fingers in there to get it out. So, one thing I might have to do if I know I'm gonna be walking away from the tripod for a while is actually take the plate off, put it on, which kind of defeats the purpose of what, we're, what it's supposed to be doing. But, if I slide the plate out, I can take it off. So if I know I'm gonna be on the tripod for a while, that is an option which isn't the worst option in the world. It's still definitely a lot faster than if I had to take off the strap completely, put on the bottom plate, take the plate, switch it out, and because all the pieces are still there. I just had to loosen it up a little bit as opposed to shooting all the way around. So that is one of the drawbacks I've come across, but it's easily overcome. It's just, it can be a little annoying at times if, you, if you're not expecting it, especially if it's your first time taking it out to go shoot. So definitely be aware of that if you're going to be using this. All right. So we're going to go from this to seeing how this works on the monopod. So I'm going to have to break down the tripod completely because the nice thing about the, uh, the Mifoto Globetrotter is I can take off one of the legs and turn that into my monopod. So it's going to take a minute to break this down and we'll get right back to that. So I've switched over the tripod over to a monopod, which is great for shooting sports and getting any sort of activity where you need a little bit more stability than shooting just handheld. And as far as getting this onto the thing, boom, goes right on. So I've actually got like an extra point of stability here, which I wasn't expecting in shooting like this. Although I probably won't use it because I want to get right in. But being able to put this right on the ball head 
not having to change it out means I can go straight from shooting from the hip to shooting off the monopod instantaneously. All right, so I'm back in from shooting out in the field with Jesse. We stayed out a little bit longer uh, just to make sure that we got a real good feel for it so I can give you a real good wrap up here at the end. Uh, the biggest thing you'll notice when you put the stead snap on and you start using it is that you are going from a vertical mount to a horizontal mount. And that actually is probably the biggest difference in that the way the camera hangs, the way the camera feels, it's not significantly different while you're on the strap it just feels a little different when you go to move to uh, anywhere where you're actually mounting it up on the plate it works extremely well it is everything that these guys have claimed it would be um, i've pointed out the few flaws where in order if you're going to be on the tripod for a while you're going to want to uh, jump you know loosen the plate up and take it off just so you can walk away from the tripod and have a little more movement uh, on the monopod it works fine because the camera's never really getting far away from you anyway uh, and I even noticed uh, after we were done filming, I took my monopod, I put it all the way up and pretty much just carried it around almost like a steady cam, and it gave me an extra point where I could use it to try and capture video of the dog part like that. And it gave me an extra point to keep things really steady. So it actually could be useful in that way, which I don't think anyone saw coming. Uh, which So that's actually a nice added bonus. Um, but I'm definitely glad I ordered one of these. I'll probably be keeping it on the 7200 lens because that's the one where I most would go back and forth. Um, I don't know if I would use it straight on the camera body. I'll have to play with it some more first, but I'll keep you guys up to date on that and how things are going. So I'd like to say a big thank you to Jesse, and if you are curious about any of his work, make sure you click the link over here. That'll take you over to his channel on YouTube where he's got a number of different things, different projects I've worked on with him, other projects where he's done things on his own. He's actually a very good filmmaker in his own right, let alone when I help him. So personally, I think his camera works a lot better when I'm involved. Um, and remember, you can always catch us doing our Monday aperture chat news sessions. And we have a lot more of these product reviews coming up. We're just taking a little time to make sure we get them right. We're trying to up the, the quality a little bit. So for us, that means taking a little longer to get them out than we had originally planned. But we're getting the good practice. We'll be able to get these rolling out for you much more quickly. So I'll see you next time.